All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Consistency Corner podcast. And I'm excited to welcome back our guest today, Lorian Coons, who is a um, owner of a bookkeeping agency and fractional CFO, and her team actually does my bookkeeping. So we have a great relationship, and she, I've had her on the podcast before to talk about numbers, um, which is not my zone of genius, but definitely hers. <laughs> but recently, the reason I wanted to have Lorianne back on the show today is recently, back in um, 2023, she went through a rebrand and went from being Lorianne Kuhn's bookkeeping to profit priority. And as she went through that process and unveiled the brand and, you know, even being like a customer of hers, I was able to kind of see the inside, but I wanted to have a conversation from a business owner's perspective of when do we rebrand? Why do we rebrand? What goes into that whole process? And then we'll chat a little bit about the difference between a complete rebrand and a brand refresh and when might be the right time to do each one. So Lorianne, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for have, for being back today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be back on the podcast. Um, and I'm excited about this conversation because I feel like the last like 15 months has been all about this. And I'm finally out of the whole like change and rebrand and everything. And so now I can look back and kind of, um, I don't know, just see the full picture of how everything was working, but it was yeah. definitely a journey. <laughs> So that's, that's interesting that you say that, that it is a, it was a process, a journey. It's been about 15 months because I think a lot of people think like, oh, well, I mean, me included, who thinks we can do everything in five minutes. Like, oh, let's just do a rebrand. Like, we'll have that done in a month. Like, no, 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 this is not a month long project. So walk me back to the beginning. Like, when did you start to think about maybe it's time to rebrand and what were your thoughts around that? Yeah. So I think for me, it came down to my whole business was shaped around me and my name. Mm -hmm. So like I just operated, I started out my LLC was Lorianne Coons LLC, um, mainly because I did not envision my business to be what it is today. Um, I didn't envision having this small team. I was just like, you know what, maybe I'll have a one other person maybe helping me. Um, but I really just kind of want to do a little bit of stuff on the side. Um, and at the time of starting my business, it's been like three and a half years now. I was like, eh, I can't really come up with a name that I really love. And so I started under my name, which I wouldn't say was a mistake. Um, I don't really think anything in business is a mistake because there's pros and cons to it and you learn throughout the way. Um, if I was going back, I probably wouldn't have done that right away. I probably would have just like figured out what I wanted my name to be. Um, but I do like my name now. I like profit priority. I think it speaks to really what we are doing and what our whole mission is. Um, and I didn't have that idea at the beginning. And as my business grew and as I started bringing on more team members, it started becoming this area of friction that was like, wait, your name's Lorianne Koontz and clients wanted to speak to me and they weren't really like, oh, wait, you have a team. And I'm like, yeah, I have a team. Like I, I told you this, like it's on my Instagram some. Um, and then also the fact that like, I have an amazing team and I wanted to like showcase them and like have them also in like all of our conversations and our social media. And yeah, I'm still the face of my brand, but it's not all about me and I couldn't be where I'm at without my team. So it's also about giving them credit. Um, and the only way that I could do that is, was like removing my name from yeah. the full name of the business. And that's why I decided that. And so I started that whole process, probably, yeah, like I said, probably like 15 months ago of thinking through like, what do I want my name to be? What does this look like? How does it work? And I thought it was going to be a lot quicker process. Um, but then it just got in deeper and deeper and deeper. We changed all of our systems. We changed our website. We changed like our website platform. We rebuilt our website, our CRM, our like communication system with clients. Like we did a complete like shift of everything. Uh, and I'm very thankful that we did because it works so smoothly now. Um, but we also did like an overhaul, like I said, of all the systems and everything through the rebranding process. So there was a lot of stuff happening. Um, but I think now I do feel like we have our team present on social media and we are able to give them credit and be able to just not just be me, but kind of showcase like, yes, it is a team of women that are helping empower other women to understand the finances. Yeah. You know, I think your story is similar to a lot of women in business is that they mm -hmm. start out a brand and particularly for service providers, yeah. they start out as a service provider. It's just them. 
and they have success and they start to grow. And to your point, like as the CEO, you're still the personal brand. You're still the face of your business, but it's become so much more Mm -hmm. than just you. And even that shift of going like in your content from saying I versus we, like that becomes a change. And I think that's almost sometimes like a signal of like, Hey, is it time to think about something different? If you've been operating under your name. Now, maybe yeah. you've been operating under a brand name already. Like you started out with a brand name, but it's always been just you. You know, and I've talked to business owners about this, about like using we versus I and talking about team versus myself when there is no team, but you had a team and your team was having direct interaction with your clients. And so mm-hmm. I love that you wanted to give them that credit and make sure that they also were part of the brand because your people are such an integral part of what you do and how you deliver it for your clients, right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And like we made that shift in like all of our content, I would say probably like even two and a half years ago. And mm-hmm. so like looking back, like that was pointing and directing to a rebrand um, and mm-hmm. change of our name and kind of just the whole, even like our vision and how we operate. Um, but it is like you were saying, the team is so important in this. Um, and I did start quickly with having a team. Um, I have, I'm a mom of two little ones. I don't want to be working 40 hour weeks. I want to be home with them. Um, I want to be working 20 hours or less. And that's always been my goal for this business. And in order to do that and continue to grow, like I got to the point where I was maxing out on my client load and it's like, do I stay here or do I continue to grow? And I, I've had that decision time and time again. And I've had to be like, okay, well, now it's time to bring on another team member if I want to continue to grow. Um, And then with that, it just quickly compounded. And I'm like, I have to give them credit. Like, I really did not feel right talking about I did all of this or I did this Mm -hmm. or I'm the one that's helping make these decisions or helping provide clients finances in an easy way whenever my team was doing it. And I think it was that was more of like just a um, just honoring them in that, too. Mm-hmm. Which is, I'm sure one of your personal brands is that, or your, your personal values yeah. is recognizing people and being mm-hmm. appreciative of the work that they put in. Um, and you wanted that to reflect in the content that you're putting out there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And they really are amazing. Um, and I think that's really the whole foundation of why we did what we did. Yeah. And you know, you said that while you were going through the rebrand and changing like your domain and your logos and shifting the colors slightly and choosing new brand visuals and all that, you also were making back end changes. Talk to me a little <laughs> bit about that. Was that more a for team experience, client experience? Why do it all at once? Um I I don't know why we did it all at once. <laughs> it just became this whole thing. Um I so what happened was, is if we're re, uh, rebranding, change your name, obviously we got to rechange the domain. Um, and then the domain has backlinks because I've been on a lot of podcasts mm-hmm. and I've been, I, my, my content and links are literally everywhere. I think today I probably have like 50 or 60 plus guest episodes that are backlinking to so many different landing pages. So then from there, it's just like, how do I ensure those backlinks work with my new domain and what does the process of that look like as well as um our pinterest has been really picking up traffic so it's yeah. really growing and really big at the moment and so i was like how do we keep all of those links to my new domain and how does that all work together so that was the mm-hmm. first process and then at that time i was on kajabi which i think kajabi served a really good purpose for the time that i was in because it's all in one place my email marketing i had workflows i had so many different things in Kajabi. Um, but it was time to kind of up level a little bit. And I know a lot of people love Kajabi and always will stay in Kajabi. But for me, I wanted a little bit of different things, um, in place. I wanted a different email marketing platform. And so with all of the website stuff and like a different, I actually, let me go back when we were doing the domain and think about the backlinks, that's whenever I decided, okay, we're doing a rebrand and we're going to have like switch our website. Then if we're going to switch our website platform, cause I wanted something a little bit more customizable. So we ended up having switching to Squarespace. So at that point then I'm like, why am I paying for Kajabi, which is kind of expensive if I'm moving my website off of there. And if I don't have courses, that's another thing. I don't have courses. I don't really plan to have courses. So I'm like, 
well, I guess we should move everything else off of there. So then that means figuring out what email provider to get, figuring out um, how, again, how the links are going to work on the backlinks, even if it is on Squarespace. So I moved lauriannecoons.com to Squarespace. I moved uh, Profit Priority. I had uh, Ray and Dwell Designs build that out. They also did my rebrand. So they were amazing. Um, so they built that out. And then we kind of tied in all of the necessary links back and forth. But then we ended up switching to Active Campaign um, for our email marketing. And then we ended up, um, we're in the process of getting our Dubsado set up. That was kind of on the back end, but we've been kind of just manually doing all of our CRM stuff um, through all of this. So that's kind of like the last piece of the puzzle is getting that set up. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a lot more than what you think it is. Like, yeah. like, it's okay. That was like three minutes of talking, but it's like so <laughs> much, so much. Yeah. Well, and it's not only is it like the actual steps of doing the thing and making the moves and implementing the decisions, but even the evaluating and the deciding I can, yeah. and the research I can imagine takes a lot of time and mental energy. Talk to me about like, as a small business owner, how much of that, those decisions were just you on your own? And how much were you leaning on your team to even talk through what the right decision was? Yeah, I think like in terms of design, like where to host or like a website, email marketing and stuff, our website, I knew I wanted to work with Brainwell. They only mm -hmm. work on Squarespace. So I'm like, you know what? They can build it on Squarespace. So mm -hmm. that was easy. Um, email marketing, I think came down between Flowdesk and Active Campaign. Um, Active Campaign. I was talking to a couple different people. They say it works better with ads and Facebook ads, which I don't currently run, but I would like to in the future. And so I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I want it on there. Um, and then we ended up also another thing we ended up doing was implementing Slack and then implementing all of our clients inside of Slack, which was really amazing too. Um, I don't know. I mean, I got a couple different people's advice on there, but I think that was a big part of where, like where the team weighed in too, just because mm -hmm. that's involves the team a little bit more. Um, my admin assistant had some weigh in on like the email marketing and like we use Thrivecart for our digital products now. So she kind of helped me pick on that because I'm like, mainly she's going to be doing that type of stuff and all of the, the admin type of stuff there. So she kind of picked what she wanted to work with there a little bit. Um, so yeah, I leaned on them where it needed to be. And then yeah, our website, it was kind of just already decided. Yeah. And I love that, that you leaned on the experts and you went with your gut. Like you knew you wanted to work with Brandwell. That was like your gut instinct. And it was yeah. like, okay, well, this is what they work on. So then that's what we're going to do. And that's fine. And I think sometimes finding like the right expert that vibes with you can sometimes make mm -hmm. those decisions easier versus like, 87,000 different platforms and tools out there. I mean, there, we know there's so many softwares that you can evaluate that it can become really overwhelming because here's the thing. There's no right choice. There's no yeah. best option. Like they all have pros and cons. They all do things similar, but in a different way. And so just, I think making a decision and taking action sometimes is what a mm -hmm. lot of people are hesitant to do because they're afraid they're going to do it wrong. Yeah. And I think what, I do think one way that I've gotten so far so fast in my business is because I'm a quick decision maker. Like mm -hmm. you put something in front of me, I'm going to pick something and I'm going to go with it. Maybe it might not be the best decision, but you know what? It's probably going to work and we will figure it out as it goes. If it's wrong, we'll learn and we'll change it. Like, yes. this, like even looking back, whenever I decided to go to Kajabi for my website, I probably wouldn't have done that at the beginning, but it worked great. It served me for the time being and it's brought me to where I'm at now. Um, yeah. So like when you're presented with a decision in business, like to me, I'm like, just take action instead of sitting and trying to decide for months on end, because that's mm -hmm. what's going to delay you in all of this stuff. Yeah. You'll wish because once you're done, yeah. if you waited a really long time to make the decision, you're going to wish you had started sooner. And so yeah. it's just make, take the action, do the thing. You can always shift and pivot and change down the road. Mm -hmm. One of the other things that I'm curious about is when you in, unveil profit priority, you kept Lorian Coons as a brand and you kept having two Instagrams. And that's something that I hear from founders, particularly female founders that like, oh my gosh, what do I do? How am I managing two Instagrams? What does it mean? 
walk me through your thought process around that, because I think it is personal for everybody, but it's helpful to hear other people's kind of decision-making processes. Yeah. So I went back and forth. I'm like, do I change my name on my current Instagram? Because that had traction and we were at like, I don't know, 3,500 followers or 3,000 followers or something. Do I change that to profit a priority, start a new uh, account for my brand? Um, Do I just have one account? Do I do what I did, which is keep my own account, which was lorianekuntz.co and then start a new account? And after talking to a couple different people that had both their personal brand and a business uh, brand, they recommended like people want to buy from people. And people want to know who the founder and the owner is. And you're always going to be able to sell more from your personal brain and your personal life. And so you should keep your personal like account, your personal Instagram, and really make it personal. So that's been a shift that like I haven't done super well on because I've been very busy, but like really making that personal brand like showcase like just my life and what's going on as like a business owner and a mom and everything. And then really have a additional account for profit priority. And that's been kind of fun. And obviously you're starting from zero again. So it feels like another thing that you have to grow up and like raise almost as like a kid. Um, But it's been fun because the people that are following that I feel are very truly interested in profit priority in like the bookkeeping and um, CFO side of things. Whereas maybe people on the Lorian Kunch just might be interested in seeing my life or just like seeing where I'm guest speaking or my podcast appearances. And I wanted to kind of keep that separate too, is like, okay, this is the done for you work. And then over here, like maybe I'll speak at conferences. Maybe I will. Um, and I have done that before. And I think that's kind of, it was in the time of this and it kind of help me decide on keeping that because I do want to do that more is speaking at conferences. Um, obviously I've been in podcasts, yes, but kind of have my own personal brand and who knows, I will probably start another business at some point. So I want to keep that and then have just different like divisions of, I don't know, my businesses, I guess. Yeah, no, I love the way you map that out. And I think your thought process around speaking engagements is really rings true. And I hear that from a lot of women. And I know for me, like if I, pod- if I guess podcast, I will every so often look over at my other Instagram because I have one that's ruthie.starrett that has like, you know, family Christmas pictures and whatever. I will find like every once in a while people will message me there. And I'm like, oh, like I don't really hang out over here, but people find me because that's my name. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I really always talk with women about, particularly if you have a unique name. Like if your name is Jessica Smith, like, okay, there's 10,000 Jessica Smiths. Like you definitely need once your brand name, but if you have a more unique name, people are going to remember your name and Google you. And so having a social media profile with that is really important. Um, and then to your point, like you never know what's going to happen 10, 15 years, five years down the road, you might start another business. You might pivot and do something else. So having that personal brand is important. And even if and this is where I think a nine grid can be helpful for some some of my clients is like, even if you're not actively doing anything, at least you have that placeholder and yeah. your nine grid could be like, Hey, head over here. Cause this is where we're active. And this is where we're hanging out around the brand because you're in the thick of, in the weeds of building a business and a company. Yeah. Yeah. And I like that because you don't have to be, I think that's somewhere where it's like, Oh, you're managing two different things. And it's like, no, just pick whatever account you want to prioritize and kind of stick with that. And the other one, just kind of post whenever you feel like it. You don't have to. If you have capacity to have a whole Instagram strategy on both accounts, that is amazing. We don't. like, We don't have the capacity and neither do I want to have the capacity. So I'm not going to make time. Um, So my personal account, I'm there. Um, I'm on my stories. I sometimes post on my like. Uh, on my feed. Sometimes my admin person will post on my feed if it kind of corresponds to um, my personal brand more than the business. But for the most part, we're trying to grow like our business account at the moment. Yeah. Well, and that's something that somebody had asked me once about stories. And you mentioned like, you know, I, I show up on my stories if I feel like it. And I had a business owner who she was like, so what am I supposed to do on stories? I'm like, do what you want to. You have to find marketing strategies and marketing containers that feel good for you. If you like to hop on stories and talk about this, that, and the other, do it. If you don't and it feels forced, don't. Like we want Mm -hmm. to find 
marketing activations that feel good and that we can be consistent with because they're aligned with our values and who we are, right? Yeah. And I think even to, to the point of like, there's so many different ways you can show up and like, if we're just talking about stories, um, some people have a literally all put together, very aesthetic, like they have their hair and their makeup done. I'm not always like that. Like I'm, I have two little kids. I'm running a business. I'm exhausted. I'm trying to heal my adrenals and trying to get the rest. I don't have time to make it all nice. And so there are times that I just woke out of bed, put on a sweatshirt and leggings. And that's just how I am for the day. And I think that like trueness and that realness like corresponds to people that I want to be my clients kind Mm -hmm. of in a way and people that I want to create friendships to um and to like just really walk alongside in business of because we are just just trying to make it through the day and um really hit all of our like our goals and dreams and what we want out of life and for some people that's awesome if you want to have like be all put together and show up on stories every single day for me I'm like you know what if I'm in my gym clothes and just my kids are screaming in the background. Like that's totally fine. Cause that's just how I'm going to show up. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So we're talking about values, personal values, brand values. When you went through the rebrand, did you spend time kind of revisiting those things or did you just take what you had already established and be like, okay, it's just moving over here and it's going to have a new name now? Oh no. I think the, the foundation of a brand is coming up with your like vision, your mission, your branding words, your values, um, everything like that. So we did take quite a bit of time to be able to go through all of that. And I'm trying to find um, my whole document that had all of that, but I cannot find it right now. Um, but we did take quite a bit of time to like, look at that. I had my team weigh in on that. Uh, we had a team retreat in June, right before all of this, like really started. Um, and we really wanted to like be, um, in sync with each other on what, like we wanted to focus on. So like we are very into quality and transparency, um, reliability, making it simple and be able to educate our clients. And those would be like our branding words of like, we really want those five or six things for all of our clients and in everything we do. And then from there, it kind of, we moved into like, okay, how do we want our clients to feel? Um, and I've always been about like confidence, calm, refreshed, empowered, um, peaceful. I don't want them to like look at their numbers and be like, oh my gosh, like everything's like freaking out, like, and going crazy. And then they just walk away from their numbers. And I really want to like, kind of tone it down and bring a, um, peaceful atmosphere kind of. Um, we walked through different client journeys on how we wanted to take them through, uh, develop like our mission and our vision statement on everything and kind of our why on what we're doing. And so we kind yeah. of like redid, like I did that whenever I first started my business. Um, and it's all, it's, it's always shifting. It's a living document. <laughs> um, yeah. but we really took a lot of time on developing it for the new brand. Yes. And I love that you said that it's a living document because oh, your yeah. brand is led by and built by humans and humans are always growing and evolving. So therefore your brand is going to too. And it's interesting because I am, as we're recording this in the midst of the start of a brand refresh. And so when I think about like a brand refresh versus a rebrand, they're very similar. And I think the biggest difference is a rebrand is like the name has changed. And so everything has to change then where a brand refresh with a consistency corner, like I'm still doing all the same things that you did in terms of revisiting ideal client and how we help and what our brand words and what our vision, mission, and values are. And we're going to shift some of the visuals, meaning that we are going to maybe realign on fonts, color story, you know, tone, brand slogan, but the name is going to stay the same. And so you had a reason for changing the name and that we talked about with your team, but it's interesting because like just giving this a Google, like <laughs> there's this article on HubSpot that's like, oh, typically you do a rebrand if your brand strategy has failed. Well, that's not true at all. Your brand was very successful. But when you looked at the future of the brand, it didn't feel in alignment to stay where you were. So talk to me a little bit about like when it comes to making the decision of when to do it, like you had the decision. I know you said you're a quick decision maker. And then once you make the decision, boom, we're going to go. 
But from a financial perspective, knowing that a brand refresh or a rebrand is both going to take some investment. How do you kind of weigh those costs and know when it's the right time to do something like this financially? Yeah, I kind of went back and forth on like, what do we do? Do we just change the name, keep all of our like visual brandings? Um, And then uh, Victoria from Brainwell, she's like, no, like if you're going to change the name, you need a new website, you need a whole new like brand and look. And I was a little bit hesitant on it. Um. Because it was just a lot and then it just costed a lot. You had a rebrand, you get branding done, and then you also get a whole new website. And that cost, I mean, for I would say most people it's between ten to twenty thousand dollars for both mm-hmm. of those things. Um, and so that's like quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. Um, but I knew that long term that it was going to be what I wanted it to be. Um, It was the vision of my company. Um, And then I always tell my clients that you need to have a like business savings fund in place um, and an emergency fund in place. And I knew I had the cash available. So I'm not a big fan of going into debt or putting things on credit cards for stuff like this. I mean, there are certain times where it might be beneficial, uh, but I think you have to kind of weigh that out. But because I had that in place and had those funds in place, I knew like, okay, you know what? I can go ahead and go move forward with this. Um, And I felt more like, okay, doing that than per se, like putting on a credit card or doing even payment plans sometimes. Although I I have done payment plans before and I'm not completely against them. Um, But for me, I had that cash reserve for times like this to where I know I want to make an investment. And currently I'm building that back up because I took out a bunch of money for my home renovation. So (laughs) I tell people, I'm like, okay, you should keep it in there for business. But, um, sometimes you, you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, so your home office needed some work, right? (laughs) No, it was, it was more than that. It was, um, (laughs) like a complete gut job of like our whole entire house. But, um, Anyways, that's a side thing. Um, but I think it's important to kind of prioritize having that in place. And I want it to like build that up again. Um, because I know there will be investments in the future that I'll be like, and again, I'm a quick decision maker. So I want to have the cash available. So I want to be able to have it and be like, okay, I want to do this and I want to do it now type of thing. Um, but I think if you don't have that kind of like mapping out, like, what does it look like? Um, what would it look like if you, try to put savings aside every month. How long would it take? Um, what would payment plans look like if they offer payment plans? Um, what does, sometimes you can get like a, uh, excuse me, a 0% interest credit card for 12 months. Um, if it's really a necessity, like a necessity, but I would be very careful doing that. Um, because you don't want to get hit with all of that interest at the end of the 12 months and you don't want to get in that habit of using it. Um, and just having that credit card debt kind of lingering on you um, yeah. for 12 months. So yeah. it's kind of a process of everything, but it really does come down to knowing, <laughs> knowing your numbers and knowing that like, okay, this is what I'm profiting every month. This is where things are at. Um, it's funny because I actually had a client ask me yesterday, um, should I do a rebrand and a website? And this is the cost and should I do it? Um, and <laughs> It, I mean, I don't like telling clients no, but in a way I did tell her no. I'm like, this is not advisable for you at the moment. Um, and I'm proud of her for thinking that. I'm proud of her for asking me. That's why we're here. Um, but I kind of showed her, I'm like, this is what your numbers are showing. And this is a very, very large portion of your sales um, for like the whole entire year of 2024. That's not mm-hmm. even including any other expenses. And I'm like, I don't think this is a really smart idea at the moment. So maybe if we split it up or find a cheaper option. Um, and then at the time she also had um, some credit card debt too. And I wanted to be like, you know what, before you add anything else, if you are going to put it on the credit card, you have to get rid of this. Mm-hmm. You have to pay it off. Um, so yeah. Anyways, all about yeah. making sure you know your finances. Yeah, for sure. And making sure that not only before you make the decision and the investment that you do understand the upfront cost or the total cost, but you also understand how much time it's going to take. Oh, yes. Even if you're outsourcing and you have a design team and a web designer and all these people supporting you, it's still going to take some time of yours or your team's. And then just knowing like how long it's going to be before things are fully implemented. Is that something that like, you expected going into it or were you a little bit surprised of how much time it ended up taking? 
Um, I don't know if I was surprised. Um, I, yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. I kind of, I don't know if I was surprised or not. It just kind of evolved. Um, but I didn't do a lot of the work. So Mm -hmm. obviously I outsourced my uh, website. I outsourced my branding. Um, and then my admin person, she's like a whiz with like all of our tech stuff. Um, and so she did a lot of the just backlinking. She built out my, just like a quick landing page for Lorianne Kuhn's website. She put out all of our other landing pages that would have been linked to like other previous podcasts. Um, she did a lot of stuff there and it took a lot of work, but also there was so many questions from my, uh, design team on just like, where do you want things at? And I did have my copy. I still love my copy really good. So that was great. Um, make sure if you're rebranding and doing a website, do your copy first, if you don't have it done first. Um, so that was already done on my previous website. So we just can make some shifts there. So I had to do that. Um, and then just like little tech stuff. It's just like, do you want it to be this or that? Do you want it to look like this or that? Do you want it on Lorian Coons or do you want it on Profit Priority? Like, it's just so many different things and systems. Um, and through all of that, too, we revamped all of our ClickUp stuff and just thinking through how we wanted all of our workflows to be. And even though I would, like, send a voice message on how I wanted something to be and they implement it, it still was, like, I worked so much on, like, how mm-hmm. should this be outlined in just like everyday work yeah what's going to be the best way that's one thing that I think when I became a business owner that I didn't realize that like the work of decision making and how much it takes (laughs) out of you like just yesterday I did and we're recording this in January but I did like an annual planning retreat so it was like a five-hour day of like really spending a ton of time looking back and visioning and mapping out plans and projects and tasks. And I got to the end of the day and I was like, man, I am spent. And like, so exhausting. It is, and it has to do with how much capacity you have, your mental capacity. And so when you're making decisions that are like really going to be pivotal moments mm-hmm. for the future of your brand, that can be heavy. So, you know, you know yourself and you have the self awareness and have done the personal development work to know that like you're a quick decision maker. We're going to take action. We can pivot down the road if we need to. But like, I think even knowing that about yourself can be really, really helpful when you've got some big decisions to make that can, you know, really impact your future. And if you know, you're the kind of person that needs to sit with it a little bit, Mm -hmm. or you know that you're the kind of person that needs to talk it through with somebody like those are the pray about it, journal about it, whatever it is, like knowing your own Mm -hmm. decision-making style, I think is really helpful. Yeah. And like, again, for me, like, I just give me like a couple options and even like, it it even goes through, like, like I was saying the home renovation, you're like, how did you pick different things to put things together? And I go to some people's houses that are doing renovations and they have like 20 different colors of whites on the wall. And I'm just like, pick a white. They're all going to look the same once you paint it on the wall. Like it's really not going to matter. Um, (laughs) so like I, I picked one color. I saw a cool, picture on Instagram and or Pinterest. And I'm like, that's, what's going to happen. Um, my husband is completely different. And sometimes it drives each other, like both of us crazy because he likes to sit on things. He doesn't like last minute decisions. He doesn't like last minute plans or trips or whatever. And he needs to like be prepared in advance. But like, also I know that about him now. And so like, I can like be like, Hey, I like, what about this? Or I'm thinking about this and like put little, like see, like plant little seeds, like sprinkle them through as it comes up to a decision or something um to where for me I'm just like just present it to me and I just I just want to make the decision I don't want to take up brain space for it yes oh my gosh I can totally relate to that well this was so insightful and helpful before we wrap up is there any kind of like look backs now that you're kind of got this in the rearview mirror you're wrapping up reflections things that you would want to share with somebody who's considering a rebrand or a refresh like kind of a last parting words of wisdom Yeah, I would say also, like, I haven't mentioned it before earlier in this episode, um, but creating a business that's not fully depending on you Mm -hmm. um, is so important that one of my favorite books is called Built to Sell. And it's creating like, it's walking through this marketing agency's journey, selling, Mm -hmm. and they started out, and I forget the owner and what his name was. But they started out and he was fully present. He was the complete brand like face the brand, everything was depending on him. 
it was not a sellable business. Um, I don't ever have plans on selling. Like I don't want to sell, but I don't know what the future is going to hold. And I don't want to, if for some reason in 15 years, I want to get out of this, I don't want it to just let it go. Like I spent so much time and energy and I want someone else to reap the benefits of it too. But also like, I want to get paid for all of that time and what I've built. So mm-hmm. like, I kind of wanted to shift and make my business a sellable business, even though I don't want to, but make it one. Um, and I think even looking at other aspects, it's going to really benefit just your marketing, the way people view you, the way people treat your other team members. Um, I know this is getting a little bit long, but I did have like one of my clients treat one of my team members really wrong and like treat them really badly. And I'm just like, like this is not happening. So like that's was a big portion of how I decided to shift it to like these are very smart people there. I picked them because they're amazing um and everything. So anyways, side tangent, but read the book. <laughs> yeah, what well, have you read um Clockwork? Mm-mm. So it's the same author that wrote Profit First and okay. I'm reading it right now. I'm like only maybe 20% through, but he has this whole thing about you're supposed to get your business running like clockwork. So you as the CEO could step out for four weeks or longer and the business can keep going. Like oh, yes. yeah. so similar to like, if you're ever going to sell, but like, you're not going to sell, but you're going to step out. Like yeah. it doesn't need you. And one of the things that he said that really, like I was walking and listening to it and I like stopped and got my notes app to write this down that said, if you're an entrepreneur, your job is to create jobs not Mm -hmm. to do jobs. And that like stuck with me so much because as a solopreneur, when you start out, you're doing all the things and it's easy to be like, I can just do it faster. I'll just do it myself. But then to your point, like eventually you hit a capacity. Yeah. And so to stay in that mindset of my job is to create jobs, not do them. Like for me, it was like really eye opening of like, okay, yes. And so for me, like even the brand refresh and thinking about writing copy about the team or we, or what the consistency corner does. And that shift of versus like, I, you know, and I'm in a position where we sit today, I don't have a team, but I have visions for who I want to hire and how I want to bring them in. And so thinking through all of those things is really important when you're creating the language that you will use to communicate with your audience. And this is something that I think sometimes business owners particularly those who are not in creative industries. So I applaud you for doing this work as someone who's normally focused on numbers. But oftentimes people think that this is like fluffy stuff. And what you had said about the foundation is like, no, this is the foundation. And I use this analogy with clients a lot is that if you're building a house, like it's, it's fun to pick out the light fixtures and the curtains and the furniture. But if you put light fixtures and curtains and furniture on a pile of dirt, they're not going to last. Mm-hmm. We have to dig a foundation. We have to build a foundation. And that part takes time and it's not always fun and it's hard work, but it is essential for the lasting success of a business. Oh, for sure. I like that analogy. It's really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, Lorian, thank you so much for being here. Um, if you all are interested in connecting with Lorian, she's at Profit Priority and her team is amazing. I can tell you, I am one of those clients who's in Slack asking questions and getting support from the team. So they do a great job. So if you're looking for bookkeeping support, they can do that. Um, anywhere else that people can connect with you or where you hang out online. Yeah. Um, our Instagram's Profit Priority. And then my personal Instagram is Lorian That's pretty much, pretty much where I'm at. Um, and then our, um, website is profitpriority.co. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. This is a lot of fun.